Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Who in the Tour YouTube channel. And, and today is, is preparation day. Yes, it is. Oh, yay! Yes. And that's it. That's all you gave us. Uh well I figured someone else could do on after that. Well it is but preparation day, and for those that are new to the channel, we do say this every week, but it's a day you are going to get everything done the day before, which would be today. You are going to get everything done today. You're going to get your work, you're going to get your food, you're going to get everything prepared so that you do not have to do anything but rest and spend time with our our Father in heaven. That's what your that's what your job is supposed to be on the Shabbat is to do nothing. It is not to work. It is not to clean. It is not to cook. It is not to worry about other things outside of Yah and his and his time and, and his. rest, 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 rest. That's what it's all about. It's a day of rest. Yes, thank you very very much. Um, I appreciate that. And so uh, we did miss the youthful at Yah last night. Um, I guess let me set this up real quick. And for those of you who do not know this. Um, we have 10 full-blooded pit bulls, actually nine full-blooded pit bulls, one half pit bull, one half lab. And um, it was all by accident, unfortunately, that this has happened to us, that we are doing what we are doing, which is trying to raise a family of five people and a family of 10 pit bulls and trying to survive. And every once in a while, there are bad things that can happen. And you guys have all heard the stories of there's always a, an alpha in a pack, right? There's always an alpha of some kind um, doing something. And um, that is very true in a pack. And you know, Yah has... Um, so I guess Yah, Yah doesn't put more on your plate than what you're absolutely capable of handling. And we are... Um, I, I guess we, you would say we could possibly be a violent style of people. Um, we have always, you know, I have pictures of my boys when I was back in my youth and they were just youngsters and I was fighting MMA. So part of my job was to, uh, well, part of a hobby and, and my job was to put my hands on other men and submit them and force them into my will. And that is what the point of MMA and fighting and that kind of stuff is. And um, is it something that's holy? I, I don't know. It, is it something, the stuff where it's become, where it's on TV and you have women fighting, that's totally unholy, all that stuff. But I believe that men, as being men, should absolutely be able to defend their families. They should be able to defend their wives. They should be able to take care of business when that time comes that they should do that. And so all my life, um, I've always been in some sort of uh, combat sports and um, I guess that has led over to here and I have pictures of my kids when they were in when they were just growing up and they have headgear on and they have fight gear on and they've been boxing and fighting and MMA stuff ever since they were little kids. I've always had them in the combat sports as well. So it's not like we are um, just some saps that ended up with 10 pit bulls and our pit bulls are a little different because a lot of people, everybody we've ever heard of other than one person has kennels. They have kennels, they lock their dogs away, they, they do it. Our dogs are free range dogs. They live with us, they sleep with us, they dwell with us, everything. They don't, they've never been on leashes, they've never been in, on chains. Um, and they, it sometimes can get kind of hectic. And so we have learned a lot about pit bulls. We've learned a lot about stuff. And, um, last night we, uh, around three o'clock every day, and this is a lot of information. You guys can forward, you know, maybe five minutes and this will be over. But, um, every day at three o'clock we have this thing, um, we call it fit club. And so my job with high blood pressure these days is that I get on my little exercise machines all day around three o'clock, the boys come and uh, I, I battle them on the, uh, the machines. So we do lift weights and I just put them through a, a bunch of cardio and I am helping them increase their own temples and to get strong. And during that time around three o'clock yesterday, one of the dogs, Leo, started going crazy under a shelf. And um, we were half on the machines and half on, you know, just exercising. We didn't think too much of it. Nicole started feeding the dogs. And for those who do not know, we make our own food for the dog food. Um, just because that's, we wouldn't have dog food if we didn't do that. So, um, she was over there feeding the dogs and Leonidas, Leo kept getting pretty disruptive and, um, all of us will have a different story for this, but I would like Nicole to actually tell us the, the story to begin with because she actually saw it from a distance. And the thing about, here, here's things you don't know when you're in a combat sports or when you guys are in traumatic situations, once it's over and your adrenaline's done pumping, you can't remember a tremendous amount that happens. So we've, I've had probably 20 or so 30 fights maybe with the dogs myself. Um, and I can barely remember parts of them. And if there's other people around, they will have more details to it. But it's like any, any kind of traumatic event. Um, 
you just don't remember a lot of it. So Nicole was, we were all here to thank Yah for this and thank his messenger. So how did this go down, Nicole? So Eli was actually feeding the three dogs together, Tubby, Bubs, and Panthro. And they were all eating just fine. And I was actually trying to get Leo to get out of the shelf to figure out what he was trying to get. And all of a sudden, Bubs and Panthro decided to attack each other. So then... Tubby and Josh decided to jump in as well. So we have four so. dogs fighting <laughs> at this same time. So Caden grabs one of them. Eli, Caden grabbed Bubs. Eli ran over and grabbed Panthro. Jaden and I both had Tubby for some reason. And then Jaden let go of Tubby. I still had Tubby. And then Jason actually grabbed Josh and then got Josh out of the mix and pushed him back. Eli let go of Bu or Panthro. Jaden grabbed Panthro. And then Jason got him broken apart. And if you can see, if you can envision this, it started on one edge of the kitchen and it ended up at the other edge of the kitchen is where this ended up. Um, and here, here, let's, I guess, go over what, Jade, what, what did you, what is your thoughts? What did you see on this fight? Um, I thought it was closer to the wall, but I guess it was more towards the other side of the room of the kitchen. We don't even know what size the room is on. The fight yeah, was so I, crazy. I, I thought it was closer to where we have a like little dishes shelf. That's what I thought we were, we were at, but I guess it was closer to more like the kitchen counter. Yeah, we were right next to the kitchen counter. Yeah, now, and that's, I, that was completely across the room. So yeah, they. <laughs> I, I grabbed Tiger, pulled him out of. So the you thing. grabbed him, put him in a choke. He went kind of limp. And yeah, you I tossed him to the ground. Yeah, I tossed him to the ground. Went back for the other dogs. I guess he got back up afterwards. I thought he was out cold. I'm like, okay, he's done. Kind of go back for the next dog. Okay, so that's what you saw, Cade. What did you see? Uh, the entire time, I think uh, I was on Bubs. I just had a hold of Bubs, and I was trying to like. Put them both, Bubs and uh, Panthro, both on the ground, like basically just smother them. Pan Panthro had Mr. Bubs' mouth. They engaged in mouths, and Ms. Panthro had him chopped from the bottom. If you can envision a top, a dog, two dogs and their mouths together, the dog on the bottom had clamped, but it might have been the top. And so basically they were clamped on they were latched and you know there's rumors that you know once a pit bull will lock down it's impossible to break the lock and then i we started raising pit bulls thinking this and before and we didn't know that you could actually just reach in their mouth and it's not again this is something that you would not want to do do not attempt at home do not attempt this at home and had we not be in mma fighters and actually enjoyed getting beat up and have blood all over us um, back in my youth, this would not be a this would not be recommended for anybody, right? You would probably have a heart attack, especially my high blood pressure. I live at like 180, 120, and I'm sure after a fight, I was over in the 200. So um, I am literally only alive because of the grace of our Creator has allowed me to sit here with you guys today, and we can talk about this. Eli, what did you remember? So I remember I was feeding Panther and Bubs. They were both next to me. I, I was giving them one after another, and all of a sudden, Panther he just lunges at Mr. Bubs. And then, then they start like they, I don't know how, they like move towards the center of the kitchen. And that's when I go and grab Panthro by the tail. And I had him and he slipped out of my hand. I didn't re-grab him because Jaden was right behind me. And I saw Josh running right back into the fight really fast. So I go in and I grab Josh and I pull him back and keep him away. Right. And let me fill you guys in with one more piece of information. Because they just don't attack each other like this. The reason that Leo was going crazy underneath the shelf was right before that Nicole had dropped a lid. Well, I guess a small mouse had run under a glue trap that we had under the shelf. And so Leo was actually going for the mouse, two of them. So they actually knew there was a mouse in here along with feeding time. And it just made it, it's uh, everything bad that could have happened went wrong. Now, what I remember, and I will, will put this on there, is it, it goes so fast. I mean, literally, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the living room, which is right next to the kitchen, and I look over, and they just erupted. Now, I didn't see Tiger in the fight, and I only saw Josh at the end. I came up, when I ran into the pack, Josh had a hold of Mr. Bubbs' head. I grabbed a hold of Josh's mouth, and I grabbed it, and I smashed him in the head. I punched him really hard in the head, and I grabbed him, and I wheeled him. I threw him across the room, right? So now we're down to two dogs battling out, and Josh was actually going to come back up. And I like, I, this is where, if you can envision a psychotic episode, now my pack, my human pack, is now into action, and it's, it's, it's a totally different game. So Jade is on one side, and he has, he's right behind Panthro, and it's, it's one of those things that you have to be extremely, what they call fight IQ. 
Fight IQ is your ability to stay in a fight even though you're being hit and even though there's extreme pressure, you have to be able to stay calm and eliminate your opponent um, before they eliminate you. And you have to stay composed because during the composure, you're always getting beat up. You're always getting punched in the face or something is happening to you. So Jade was sitting there and he did not have a hold of Panthro's tail at the time. Cade did not have a hold of Panthro's tail. And the first, Bubstail. Bub's tail. The first rule that we have, it's called the first rule of, of Dog Fight Club is what? Tails, 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 no. tails, tails. There's no dog fight. Their, their very first rule of dog fight club is there absolutely should have never been a fight. Now, what's the second rule of dog fight club? Tails, tails, tails. Tails, 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 tails. You have to maintain your composure, and there has to stop this effectively. And I fought dogs before where there wasn't anyone else, and it is wild because I will dive into the pack and literally dive into the dog pile, and it's just it's a full-on fight. And it's like I, I am so lucky to even be here to, to explain this stuff to you. So I get over there. And I, I manhandled Josh, got him out of there. And at that point, the two dogs were latched up. I screaming for Jaden to grab tails. Caden grabbed the tails. And it was a hard, it was an interesting bite because I've, di- I've dove into dogs' mouths many times. And every time, it's not a good opportunity. It's not a good feeling. And it's something that I don't know if it's courage or if it's that you cannot allow that your family members to tear themselves to shreds and there's nothing else you can do. So, and I mean, this happened probably within all of what we're describing here happened within 30 seconds, right? The entire thing from one side to the other, there, it did not last very long, but it seems like it lasts a long time, right? So I drove into the mouth, the boys grabbed the tails, I could not get uh, the bite off of Panthro, uh, I, he was latched onto Mr. Bubs, I could not get it broken uh, the first time, I reached in, I, I went right back into it, I actually never took my hands off it, but I repositioned, and the crazy thing was, is Mr. Bubs's mouth was over the top of my hand I was literally in the hands of the dogs again and I felt I felt two or three snaps and it was not like the last dog fight where I had four heavy bites and my hand was completely gnarled this one I I got snapped two or three times and uh it I pulled away and I had dots all over my fingers and I could tell exactly where I got bit the dogs were were dogs were apart right the dogs were we got the dogs apart I grabbed Panther we drug him into a room and then we had to start uh, calming everybody down. And after a fight, it's insane what's going on. But that was actually, it, it, if that sounds crazy, it actually gets crazier because after the end of the dog fight, then I go around and I beat the crap out of every dog that was involved. If you were in the fight, I went around and I make a point that you, you get a lot of spankings, right? The big alpha. After everybody's like calmed down and I make the rounds and everybody gets spanked. Everybody that was involved in this thing completely, it gets spanked. And manhandled, and they know when it's done who the alpha of the house is. And um, it's a wild house. Now, here's the miracle on this whole thing. Jaden saw me get bit. I got bit. And like five minutes after that whole fight, I looked down at my hands, and there's nothing there. I still see nothing on my hands right now. And I saw the dots. I felt the snaps. And um, it wasn't truly bad, but it was dog bites. And... Today, the worst that I have in my hand is my, it feels like my hands are jammed. Um, Cade has an injury on his hand. Jay, do you have any injuries? I know. Anyone? Mr. Bubs has a whole bunch of arm injuries. Uh, Panthro's face is all um, swollen up, and I guess everybody else got off scot-free. A lot of people got spanks after that, though. Tiger got spanks. Uh, Josh. Josh got spanks. He got beat up. I, t- I took out Leo, too, um, just because he was messing with the mouse. So... It's kind of crazy around here. Um, like I say, it is a dangerous world that we live into. And so I thought I would bring that to you guys simply because we could not make it to the Yahoo and the Torah for Youth last night. And so let's get in to our daily stuff. And for everybody out there, our family, much love to you. Hey, we love you. Hey, you guys have, just so you guys know, you have crazy family down south here. Um, and if you guys ever meet any other family that has 10 pit bulls that are roaming around, as in this, I would love to meet these people because they're absolutely uh, hardcore individuals that uh, they're easy, they're either crazy um, or they really like dogs a lot that they're willing to put this kind of sacrifice up. And we're five years into this too, so we only have like another six years that we have to deal with this. Um, and I, I hope they go good. And I, you know, after the last fight, my thumb, I lost, I almost lost my thumbnail. Uh, this, the pr- fight before that, I think everything's good though. So let's get into this. And any, everyone, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, anyone uh, have anything else on the fight? 
No, I think that any was advice to anyone? Not really. Uh, do, when you have a dog don't fight, you pack of dogs. when you have a dog fight, you can't pull them apart because then they like rip each other to shreds because yeah, the teeth are stuck in each other. Yeah, absolutely. For, so you have to like make sure you like try to lift them off the ground. I think so they, they have, have no leverage. Something let, called let, a break stick, I think. It's yeah, like, like, we we their mouths yeah that that doesn't work. We try. You, you can do it. Probably break. not for pit bulls, but for like smaller dogs that work. It, it works for pit bulls. Yeah, that not, you have four dogs on in one fight. The problem is the adrenaline and the way that this pack works is like one or two dogs get in on this, and for whatever reason it trips them, and they all decide they're going to fight, and then you got to fight the entire pack, and it's literally a big human pack versus the dog pack, and it's wild. So anyway, that's the story for the day. We hope your week has been better than our week, and we still have a cow that's down as top of this, and so it's. The, the Hasatan is definitely tra- testing this family, and, and Yah will deliver us. He will always deliver us. And, um, yeah, just be uh, be in Yah's world. All right, so let's get on to this, guys. Um, Deuteronomy, where are we at? Actually, six. month six. We are in month six. It is a sixth day, and tomorrow is the Shabbat. And just so you guys know, tomorrow is the Shabbat, and today is the sixth day preparation day. On our Father's calendar, it is the uh, sixth day of the week, fifth day of the month, sixth month. All right, so there we go. All right, let's get into this crazy, crazy pack, my big crazy pack here. I couldn't do this without you. I definitely wouldn't ask anybody to ever try doing Pitbull stuff. Yeah, drum roll. Drum roll. All right, here we go. Deuteronomy 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is what we've been into. Three times so far in, in Deuteronomy, Moshe has said, it is because of you people, I cannot go to the land, it is because of you guys, and I want you guys to keep very good alert, um, even though we're all shook up today, even though everything's crazy, I need you guys to be aware of where we are at. I think we've done a good job so far in recording these Law, Statutes, and Commands, and we are going to go through this yet again when we're done with Deuteronomy in another translation. And we're going to try to dial it in and make sure that we have done our job. But um, let's begin. Deuteronomy 6. Now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments, which Yahuwah Elohim commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. That ye might fear Yahuwah Elohim to guard all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your son's son all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. Anyone have anything? So, that feel like command may be, yep. like, do what I do, all your generations do what I tell you to do. To guard his statutes and commandments, right? Right. Um, so, we have a, do we have something like that? Nicole, this is going to be like a hardcore chapter for you. Yes, I know. Yeah, it's the one the word just says guard his laws. Okay, guard his laws. And you're supposed to guard them, and you're supposed to, um, he said, it's to, it, again, it's to your son, your son's sons, right? And so if, if you, we've gone down this road yesterday, right? Your son's sons, sons, whatever. That's all people that would be keeping the law, statutes, and commands. Okay, three. Hear therefore, O Yashrael, and guard to do it, that it may be well with you, and that ye may increase mightily as Yahuwah Elohai of your fathers has promised you, in the land that flows with milk and honey. Okay. This is it. This is the Shema. Now, the Shema is a famous chapter. And when it is a Shema, Shema means hear and obey. And that is what the Shema is. And so when you see hear, O Yashrael, this is you guys, right? This is Yah's people. Yah's people are the people that are doing his law, statutes, and commands. We're not talking a bunch of, about a bunch of penguins that are having abortions over in the uh, land they call theirs, Right. We are in captivity. We are waking up af- out of captivity. And this is for you, my friends. Hear, O Yashrael. Yahuwah Eloheinu. Yahuwah is one. Okay, what does that mean? Does that mean there's a trinity? Does that mean there's the God, the, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? And that's who we worship is the three in one? Uh, that's like three, not one. It, sa- it says Yahuwah is one. Now, is Yahuwah a liar? Is Yahuwah is a liar? No. no. If he wanted to tell us there was a trinity, he would say Yahuwah is three. Well, if you say, I am one, and I am still one with my son, I am still this, right? But he didn't do that. He says right here, Yahuwah is one. Okay, this is very important, everyone. And you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. What is that command right there? Uh, love Yahuwah. No, what is that command? Yeshua's command. Yeah, Yahusha. The, one, the greatest of the commandments. When they were trying to set up Yahusha and they're like, oh, well, which is the greatest commandment? And this is it. He just quoted Deuteronomy 6.5, that we are to love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart, 
with all your soul and with all your might. What do you got, Nicole? Is this a commandment? Is it all these together that are going to be? Yeah, absolutely. We need to love Yahuwah Elo. Well, it's it. Or is this it? is. Well, hero, hero, Yashrael, Yahuwah is one. Um, is that a command? Yahuwah. Uh, that's not really a command. It's like saying who Yahuwah is. And that's true. Um, so, so I feel. But like yes, love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. That is a command. So that would be a new one. Yes. Yeah, four is definitely a command. Yep. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. Oh, okay. So that we need to. I mean, the Shema is like this is going to be a complex one, Nicole. Um, because we, he says, uh, I mean, the Shema should be in there, but we got to make sure we break these commandments up. All right. Important gentlemen, listen up and you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up, what did this just describe? Um, living the Torah, living uh, days, uh, how you should be living your day, right? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to talk to them. We, we're supposed to be doing what we're doing right here talking to you guys about the Torah, right? And we're sitting in your house, right? And when you walk by the way, so you're walking, what, why Why would we need to diligently keep the Torah and diligently understand it when we're walking? Why should we so be thinking we, about Yah? So we don't forget it so we don't go sin. So why we have tzitzit on, right? So we don't forget the Yah's laws are with us and his commands. Are, and so it says when all of this, when you lie down, when you rise up, so that when you lie down is when you go to bed, right? What do we do at night? Do we worship Yah? Do we pray? Do we give him glory that you survived another day in this crazy world? Um, when we rise up, Yah, our creator, has given us yet more breath. He gave us another day that we can be alive on this beautiful land and that, that he has built for us. Verse 8, and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Okay, what does that mean? Basically, your hand should be doing the Torah. Yeah, so uh, this, this is where the Jews... Those Jews have taken a little leather box and they actually strap the leather box to their head and to their hands and they run a, I think it's called a teflium, teflium or something of the sort, and they'll run like a leather strap around their arm. Um, Joshua Aaron, who, who uh, is a, uh, I guess a messianic, um, I, I guess. Singer? Yeah, he's a singer, a messianic singer. He's all straight up Jew. And he sits there and, you know, he'll do videos like this. And look, if you, you can't, if you want to be a messianic Jew, you're still saying that you're okay with 25 other books outside of the Torah. You don't want to be a Messianic Jew. You don't want to be a Jew. You, want, you don't want to just be straight Messianic. You want to be a Torah-observing, Yahusha-loving individual that is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. So, anyway, Nicole, do you have that? Yes. Do buy them? Okay, next. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and upon your gates. What do you, how do you write them on the posts of your house? Well, that's the... Uh, what about mezuzah? That's not trying to figure out the word. Yeah, the mezuzah. The mezuzah. And so I, I don't know if that's where that actually comes from, but they actually have like a little itty-bitty tiny Torah scroll that you can actually get and stick on your door. We have one on that. Um, and it, sa it says right up on the posts of your house and on your gates. Why would you write the Torah on the gates of your house, Eli? So you don't forget them when you leave or when you come in. Or when anybody or comes up to your house. Or protect, might protect your house. Yeah, might protect your house, right? The laws of Yah are amazing. Verse 10, and it shall be when Yahuwah Eloheka shall have brought you into the land which he swore unto your fathers, to Avram, to Yitjak, and to Yaakov, to give you great and goodly cities which you built not, and houses full of good things which you filled not, and wells dug which you dug not, vineyards and olive trees which you planted not. When you shall have eaten and be full, then beware lest you forget Yahuwah, which brought, which brought you forth out of the land of Mitzrayim from the house of bondage. Now, guys, why would he remind us this right here? He says, listen to this. You need to, he says, he even gives you a warning. Beware, lest you forget Yahuwah. Well, do you guys understand the importance of this chapter? Right? Yeah. You guys get this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, and hopefully all of you guys out there are the choir. But for anybody who has not heard this stuff before, this is, this is what Yah's laws are. They're, they're more important than your own life. They're more important than your own soul. They're more important than everything because they will not be, they will not be messed with. They will not go to evil. It's full of righteousness. It's full of holiness. And it's full of life. Twelve. Uh, I just did twelve, and Eli's a little back out of there. Oh, we're going over it, so I yes, it. you shall fear Yahuwah Eloheka and serve him, and swear by his name. Didn't we have a command to say for you shall fear? Yep. Okay, so this is this will be under this. You shall fear Yahuwah Eloheka. What does that mean? Okay, I mean, how do you fear Yahuwah? You revere him, you respect him, you do what he says with following the Torah. 
Yeah, yeah. And if you don't keep the Torah, you absolutely gonna, don't he's, fear. He's going to instill that fear in you. Well, he will, or you will end up in Shoal, and in the bad part of Shoal, and, and there'll be no other chance. You shall not go after other Elohim, of the Elohim of the people which are around about you. Wow. So every Christian church, every person that's going to church on Sunday is going after other Elohim. Even though they think that our creator, Yah, is in their church, he's not in a sun, day, soul, invictus, uh, keeping day, right? He's not there. Nicole, do you have that? Yes. Okay, so you got the next one? There's a ton in here. Okay, now this is in parentheses. Remember, in parentheses is not exactly what was in there. For Yahuwah Eloheka is a jealous L among you, lest the anger of Yahuwah Eloheka be kindled against you and destroy you from off the face of the earth. You shall not tempt Yahuwah Elohim as you tempted him in Makkah. Okay, so I think that's a command. Do, don't tempt Yahuwah. How would you tempt Yahuwah, Jade? Uh, by breaking his Torah, by trying to make him do something he, he don't want. Living in sin. Living in sin. That's how you're tempting him. If you want to live in sin, then you're going to fall under the curse of the Torah, which is not too good. You shall diligently guard the commandments of Yahuwah Elohim and his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded you. Yet another command. Nicole, you got that? In a minute. Uh-oh. She behind. Told you this was going to be a hard one. All right. So, as she's getting that in there, do you, how far behind are you? I'm good. Go okay. Ahead. Okay. So, here it is again, right? This is reiterating. If there is a chapter that needs tattooed on our chest, if we were able to put ink onto our bodies, which didn't break a commandment, this would be it. Right? If you had this and you had nothing else, then you would be in fear of Yah because this is what it should be. 18. And you shall do that which is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah that it may be well with you and that you may go in and possess the good land which Yahuwah has sworn to your fathers to cast out all your enemies from before you as Yahuwah has spoken. I'm looking up there. Um, I think that's another command. You shall do good in the sight of Yahuwah. Yeah. On 18. Is that a new one? That's a new one. I don't think we have anything. You shall do which is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. How do we know what is right and good, Cade? By the Torah. 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 It's all about the Torah. Okay, 19, to cast out all your enemies from before you as Yahuwah has spoken. You already read that. I love it. It's so nice. I read it twice. And when your son asks you in time to come saying, what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Yahuwah Eloheinu has commanded you? Now, why would your son come and ask you about this? Uh, he wants to know your heritage. He wants to know why you are Zizi. It's why you do what you do. Why did you teach me what you taught me? Right? This right. is what it would be. If you're teaching your son and your son's sons and everybody is learning this stuff, they would come to you and ask, what do they mean? Why, why, why do, do we do get this? there? Yeah. 21. Then you shall say unto your son, we were Pharaoh's bondsmen in Mitzrayim, and Yahuwah brought us out of Mitzrayim with a mighty hand. And Yahuwah showed signs and wonders, great and sore upon Mitzrayim, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in, to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. And Yahuwah commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Yahuwah Eloheinu for our good, always, that he might preserve us alive, as it is at this day. So I feel like... Back, that's a command as well. Right, back in 20 and 21. 20 and 21, right. be, I don't know if that should go under teach your children the commands, or maybe if your child, when your child asks you, say, say this to them, because you're supposed to say this part to them here. Okay. So that, yeah. Yeah. So twenty and see twenty has like half of the command, and then twenty one commit the beating twenty one commands. So yeah, I think it would be under the the kids if we're teach teaching your, our kids, teach children the commands, right? Because that would all be you know they'll come to you and ask why it is. So Nicole, do you have twenty and twenty one? I will add it right now. Okay, this might get a little messy. So uh, join us for Shabbat, and we will actually go over all these because we've added a tremendous amount um, this week, and so it's it's crazy. Okay, so yeah, twenty and twenty one. Is there anything else? Then we had 24, yep. um, and Yahoo commanded us to do all these statutes. Okay, so that continues on with teaching your children, but you can add that one under fear. And there's other places that that would go too, right? It'll go in two or three spots. Okay, right. Perfect. 25, and it shall be our righteousness if we guard to do all these commandments before Yahuwah Eloheinu as he has commanded us. Now, I have that highlighted right there because I've heard that all the time. And they're like, Jason... This is, the works aren't going to make you righteous. Oh, you think you're holier than the rest of everybody. Oh, you keep the laws. You think you're good people. That's what they say right here. And it says, and it shall be our righteousness, right? If we guard, 
to do all these commandments before Yahuwah Eloheinu as he commanded us. That doesn't mean you're missing one. That doesn't mean you're taking a slab of bacon and eating that for breakfast and you keep the rest of them. Because if you're eating a slab of bacon for breakfast, guaranteed you're not keeping Shabbat. Um, just, just the way it is. All right, gentlemen, that was an amazing chapter. Uh, we have a very long day. We've got to get ahead, uh, caught up here. Does anyone else have anything else? No. Uh, uh, prepare for your uh, Shabbat. Yeah. Keep the commands. Teach your children the commands. and. Uh... Yeah, teach them all. Teach everybody from the smallest to the oldest. Teach the, the hobo in the, in, the, in the alley way. You know, teach all of these guys, everybody. Everybody that you have a chance to speak to about Yahoo and his laws, give it a shot. You never know where you're going to be planting grass. You never know where you're going to be planting seeds and fields and where it will spring up. And sometimes it has to take, it begins with you. And if it begins with you and you do this, um, Yah will bless you and Yah will bless the person he you're trying to uh, reach. So, all right, guys. Thank you guys very, very much. I um, hope you guys have a wonderful day. All right. Shalom. Shalom.